Hey Live Life. I wanted to make a video showing how much your attitude has changed over the years of you being here on YouTube. At least out of the available videos anyway. There's a point when you suddenly switched to using the methodology that Atheism is Unstoppable uses. But let me show the viewers how you were, how you became, and how you are now. Hey guys, Live Life 8072 here. Came across this today from the Thinking Atheist on my Facebook, and uh, I was pretty intrigued by it, so I came home today and, and watched the whole video. But uh, this is another uh, cult in the making that might even end in a mass suicide. Uh, this guy is promoting uh, the apocalypse and the rapture and whatnot. And uh, he proclaims himself as Jesus. That he is Jesus Christ that lived over 2,000 years ago. And his name is Alan John Miller from Queensland. This, this is basically an adult version of Jesus Camp. Uh, he has a lot of followers. He has, uh, I believe, a little bit over 30 people now uh, that are basically on his compound. They basically stay with him. Um, and supposedly he has hundreds in his wings uh, that he's trying to uh, connect with. And supposedly he has thousands and thousands of viewers that view his videos on YouTube. He also has uh, DVDs out there, and supposedly it's over 100,000 DVDs out in uh, global circulation. Um, and he financially survives uh, from donations, of course. People give to Jesus, you know. So, I, I don't know what to say, I'm speechless on this, so um, there's nothing for me to really uh, go on here, just watch the video for yourself, and uh, I don't know what to say, it's a shame, it's a shame a lot of people are losing their lives that they were living for 20, 30 years, husband and wives that this guy has, has raped them from, uh, you know, he raped these people psychologically. And, and there's a lot of people out there losing their lives that they were with 20, 30 years, and it's just, it's really sad. It really is. Again, live life, you only have one. It's been a while, hasn't it? Hey, everybody, it's Live Life 8072. Um, came across this structure today, so I took a picture of it, because uh, it reminded me of the 9-11 cross that was found in the debris. Now, the cross that I found today was a structure of a boat, and it was put there by man, and was man-made. Um, now the cross at the 9-11 site was also man-made. The structure itself was made by man. And the terrorists that perfectly hit the spot they wanted to hit on the buildings made that cross. Okay. Um, that's just fact. Now, what I don't get is that the Christians and, uh, well, the Christians think, um, that that was a sign of hope when everybody seen it standing there. Now, when I see that structure, what I see is religion, how it was an attack on religion and thousands of people lost their life. That's how I view that cross. I don't want to be, I don't want it to be a part of it in the museum, and I'm glad that it wasn't a part of the memorial service. Now, for you guys to say that was sent here by God is actually impulsive. It's impulsive. Because for your God to do such a little simple thing as in putting a cross in the debris, he couldn't stop the attacks on 9-11 where thousands of people lost their lives. That's all I gotta say. He used to be humble and you could even say kind. Hey everybody, Live Life 8072 here. Um, this is an apology going out to my subscribers and to anybody else that might have been offended by my part one and part two series, Religion and Mental Disorders. I put a lot of thought into this and I've talked to a few of my friends about the series, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these videos down. Uh, reason being is that I believe I'm wrong in every aspect of these videos or in these videos. I might be making some rash decisions in these videos, or I am making rash decision decisions in these videos. So, what I decide to do is, you know, especially, you know, you know, reading comments and and listening to what skeptical heretic had to say or has said, I, I just determined that I, I really 
do need to take these videos down. That's all I gotta say. So, uh, guys, live life because you only have one. I can't picture him making another video like that again. We're looking for the elusive groundhog. Where's she at? There he is. There's that groundhog. A little shucker. Maybe we should zoom in. There he is. There he is. Look at it. Look at the face on that motherfucker. The elusive groundhog. Ever again. Hello everybody, Live Life 8072 here. I'm back. He's back. And I'm back with this story. This just broke today and it happened yesterday. Three members of a Muslim family shot to death Tuesday in their home near the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill campus may have been killed over a park in dispute. Park in dispute. Now, understand this is a Muslim family this happened to. Now, I wouldn't see them as a Muslim family. I would see them as Americans, if they're American. I would see them as human beings, okay? And my heart goes out to their family and friends, of course, no doubt. Now, you need to understand that this story will be twisted in many ways. So, please, keep an open mind here. Let's hear him say that phrase again. So, please, keep an open mind here. So, please, keep an open mind here. That seems quite out of place for what he is now. I was recently in a hangout with the Quiet Atheist, where the Quiet Atheist wanted to address Live Life on a few things. And Live Life was like, well, I want to get into this hangout and, and have a conversation. I, I should be able to defend myself. And so eventually, he did. After some strange technical issues and such that... Uh, the quiet atheist was having. And in that hangout, Live Life was doing his best to prove his point, and things kind of started to settle down. And I asked Live Life, what changed? What is it that changed? You, your personality has changed radically. And he seemed to kind of try to deny it. I said, you know, you seem to become have become more jaded. You seem to become have become more angry. And he basically disagreed. And to me, it's pretty blatant. So after a video that Jacqueline Glenn made about the Charleston shooting... Uh, Atheism is Unstoppable made a video uh, attacking her position on it. And this was on August 10th of 2015. Then Live Life made a challenge video on August 26th to challenge Jacqueline Glenn, the amazing atheist, and Sank, or Jank from The Young Turks. Now, prior to this, he hadn't really said much about the Young Turks. But Atheism is Unstoppable has been making videos about Jenk for a long time. And it was at this point that Live Life's speaking patterns started to change. And you started to see the beginnings of the change in his attitude. This video is actually a challenge to the amazing atheist Jacqueline Glenn and Jenk of TYT, the Young Turks. I want them to talk about this story, okay? They're so-called proponents of, or proponents against racism. This story is the biggest story right now worldwide, okay? And this is a story these types of people need to cover if they're going to be proponents against racism, okay? No straw mans, no red herons, no talking about Dylan Roof, no talking about Eric Garner, Okay, I want you to talk specifically about this story here and how it was a hate crime. Okay, it was indeed a hate crime. And Vester Flanagan's manifesto proves this. Now, it wasn't quite as noticeable there as it starts to get later. Like I said, that was the very, very beginning of his change. Now, here is Atheism is Unstoppable. Okay, Devin Tracy. Now, people think I'm starting to act like this guy, but no, what I am doing is I'm 
I am calling out the regressive leftists. This is a big issue now. There are other people calling out regressives like AIU is doing. So you're not acting like him, but you're acting like him. And there are so many others who call out regressives like him, like him. I'm part of that. Autopsy 87 is part of that. Sam Harris, uh, Gad Sad, and Dave Rubin, he's been on fire calling out the regressives. So if I call out the regressives and I state why people are wrong on certain social issues, it's not because of AIU. Actually, it is. You weren't doing this before you started watching AIU's videos. Or to be more accurate, before you started taking his videos seriously. Others have been calling this stuff out for a while. It's when you started to see AIU's style that you just really fell in love with it. And you started to follow suit. The way you do things is not like Sam Harris. The way you do things is not like Gad Sad. The way you do things is not like the others you mentioned. The way you do things is like AIU. He's the archetype. You, you, you created an archetype of someone who calls out regressives in your head based on AIU's style. It's not because of him. I like his stuff. I like the guy. I really do. The guy is very objective. The guy is good. His comment here says, I love it. Set fire to half of your subs. Weed them out and burn them at the stake of truth. <laughs> See? You fell in love with his style. You practically fell in love with him at this point. Very good comment. I like that comment. Very good. So there you have it, everybody. Another example of you changing the way you talk. Let's listen to it a few more times. So there you have it, everybody. So there you have it, everybody. So there you have it, everybody. My follow-up video. Pretty fucked up. Pretty fucked up. Yeah, that's what people do. These fucking people out there that are ignoring the events that led up to this girl being arrested. Well, as many people had said, you're not paying attention to the history of the girl. Any sort of problem she has. You, you think none of that matters. It's only the history of things to prove your side that you'll look at. But that's neither here nor there. You see, here's the image you used for that video. That was on October 28th. By this time, you were using a lot of Atheism is Unstoppable's language, vocal mannerisms, attitudes. This is when he stopped being courteous in any way, or kind in any way, to his viewers, to the people he's debating with. This is when it all became about a battle, instead of a reasonable, nice conversation. Now, I'm certainly not saying that he should go that full stereotype of a British type of debate. But there could be at least a little bit more courtesy going on, but it's not there. And, you know, if this is the style that he wants to do now, that's fine. But for him to say that it hasn't changed and that he hasn't become more jaded or mean, that's silly. So now let's go to February 5th. Of this year. Hey everybody, Live Life 8072 here. This is a video that is long <laughs> overdue, no doubt. Now, everybody needs to hear me out here and really listen to what I have to say. I have set my channels on fire starting about three months ago on this channel and also the Skeptic Fan Show channel, and I have lost many of my long term subscribers that did not appreciate my changes or the change in my worldview, which includes talking about the important topics that damage humanity on a daily basis. This is me coming out of my bubble of criticizing Christianity, as many of you are well aware of now. I have lost over 500 subscribers, but gained double that in the last three months. I have a good job that I enjoy and make a very good living. Money is not an issue with me. So I owe no allegiance to no one. I am a man of reason and critical thinking. I think for myself. I am, though, influenced by others. The rational type that pick apart issues in a very thoughtful and yet at times provocative manner. 
I know who my true friends are here on the internet. I am not here for fame or fortune. I'm here for intellectual discourse. You were on here for rational discourse. Now you're here to do the same thing as AIU. You're here to inflame, to state things as blatantly and negatively as you can. You want to create controversy, and you think that AIU's methodology is a winner, so you've copied it. You've copied his style. You've copied his way of talking. I think for myself, I, I am, think for myself, I, am, I can't imitate him very well, but it's just sort of a, I think for myself, therefore, I'm going to, and I'm going to, because I, and you went that route, that is how you act now. And this is part of my change on my channels, to promote the facts and sources that will support. Yes, that is how I'm changing my channel. Because it's all facts. And anyone who says anything against what I say, I will call them a regressive and say citation needed. My current claims on many important issues that infect this world. Which brings me to a talking point that is long overdue also. Atheist Rue, a.k.a. Atheism is Unstoppable. I did not like this guy at first. And I'm talking about a year ago. I was subscribed to him. Then I unsubscribed from him. I thought he was an egotistical, elitist piece of shit. Well, he is. And you've basically become just like him. Your atheism is unstoppable, Junior. At first, this was my regressive viewpoint. I have changed my view on many issues. So now to try to consider other people's views is now considered regressive by you. Good job. And thanks to Rue and others, not just atheism is unstoppable, not only because of him, but many others. And I will put this out there. Dave Rubin, which left TYT and created his own show, which is very awesome. I do enjoy his interviews, no doubt. Gad Sad, a guy I personally interviewed and had a very good time with him on the Skeptic Fence Show, and many, many others. But what I would like to address is the people that make comments on my videos that say I'm just sucking Rue's dick. Well, you are. You're actually eating the shit out of his toilet, and you're going to label Glute as a regressive because he calls you out on something? Because a bunch of people have called you out on something? We're, we're all regressives. Neat. Now, drama aside, when all this drama started with Atheism is Unstoppable four or five months ago, he was ultimately right in this whole ordeal. Well, a lot of people can see that Atheism is Unstoppable does throw out insults first. Insult first, and then have some glimmer of truth behind it. And then he'll just keep repeating that little glimmer of truth over and over again and try to make it bigger and bigger and bigger without looking up the circumstances that make up the truth that he's pushing out. He cares not about circumstances, and that's what you've changed to as well. You don't care about circumstances. And you call anyone regressive who tries to point out circumstances. You've, you've went by the AIU playbook. Fact be told. Now, drama aside again, what he does is on him. Now, when it comes to these docs and claims, he's just mentioning people's names. Yeah, people who didn't want to be named. People who wanted to remain at least somewhat anonymous. But, you know, circumstances don't matter. Anything is permissible as long as you are able to make some point, even if you lose more people in making that point than people who actually understand. I mean, what good is preaching to the choir? Well, that seems to be what you want to do. So, 
you know. The people that want to pick him apart and slander him with no evidence. Well, I mean, what he does is the equivalent of someone saying, well, you know, gay people spread AIDS. Well, gay people spread AIDS. Gay people spread AIDS. Gay people spread AIDS. Gay people spread AIDS. Like, you know, seeing a piece of paper with nothing written on it but the, the uh, sentence, all work and no play make Jack a dull boy. And, you know, he just can keep repeating that and then say, well, you know, prove me wrong, prove me wrong, prove me wrong. Well, that's not the point of anything. That's not, but he doesn't want a discussion. He wants to make blanket statements that are, they may be true, but what is the point in mentioning them if there's no step after that? Well, that doesn't matter. It's all about trying to make people angry and then calling them regressive when they get angry. Of these accusations, people that think he's still somehow a racist. Well, he may not actually be a racist. I, I don't really know. But when he makes statements that generally only racists say, and then... When people try to question him, he blocks them like, you know, Steve Shives uh, blocks people. You just say the slightest thing to disagree with him and you're blocked. Um, how else are people supposed to take that? He doesn't want a discussion. Most of the time, neither do you unless it's in a hangout. If it's not in a hangout, it's just you basically going around calling everyone a regressive. And still sometimes when you're in a hangout, you don't really want to talk about the real subject at hand. All you want to talk about it is this one tunnel vision idea that you're shoving forth and it's all about, well, prove this one thing wrong. And if you can't, well, I'm right and you're wrong. Ha 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 ha. I'm Brainy Smurf. You know, it's just, it's weird. The people that would just sit here and criticize somebody on issues that are non-issues. Issues that are about drama, but not about the intellectual discourse or the discussions we should be having. Like Atheist Rue does. This guy is a very intelligent and smart guy. And for the record, he did not put me up to this to make this video. I did this on my own. Well, that's probably true. He doesn't ask you to suck his dick. You just do. Because the guy is very intelligent. He speaks truth. He speaks facts. Now, if you don't like what I have to say here, please do me a favor, just unsubscribe. You're basically saying that, well, if you don't like what I say, unsubscribe. Because I'm not going to listen to you because you're regressive. Agree with me or you're a regressive. Seriously. If you want to challenge me on that assertion, please do me a favor. Make a response video to Atheist Rue on any video he has ever made, drama aside, about issues that matter in this world. I want you to state why you think he's wrong when it comes to crime statistics. See, there you go. It's all about one factoid. Therefore, anything else anyone says is wrong. There are no circumstances. Everything is this factoid. It's very similar to what social justice warriors do, where everyone is the demographic they, they are part of. They're not individuals. They are the demographic they represent. You're doing the same thing with statistics. Now, if you want to mention statistics in a discussion about something, fine. But don't act like those statistics are the end all of a discussion. You know, you're throwing out statistics in the same way that some of the SJWs throw out words like racism, sexism, homophobia, etc. Okay, statistics are not the end all of a conversation. Okay, these statistics exist. There are reasons why these statistics exist. Now, are there too many people out there who aren't even willing to acknowledge those statistics? Yes. But this doesn't mean that everyone who questions your view is denying reality. So in a nutshell, 
You have changed radically and not for the better. You now just want to make videos preaching to the choir and you're just so happy with yourself because you're getting all these new views and you get to hear other people calling other people regressive and you love this echo chamber and you're really being no better than you were back when you made those series of videos where you were basically saying that most religious people have mental disorders in their beliefs. You apologize for that. I doubt you apologize for this. Like I said, we will probably never see another apology video from you. It doesn't matter how wrong you are about something, your ego has become the size of a state. 